This match was released in full on our Patreon. Our Patreon is the only way to watch all Purpose events in full. Thank you to these patrons who help support Purpose Wrestling and bring great pro wrestling to you. If you'd like to join them and support Purpose, visit PurposeWrestling.com slash VOD. Link in the description. Purpose Wrestling, made with love. We have our next quarterfinal match in the Purpose Wrestling title tournament! Some interesting things coming out of that match. Did I hear the words Northwest get mentioned? I think you did hear the words Northwest come out of the NIC's mouth. And I mean, you've got a feel for Robbie Taylor there. But also, a side of Robbie Peace, though. I don't think I'd like Robbie, if I'm honest. I'm, I'm concerned. I agree with your ex, but I'm going to have to stop you because we've got to listen to Man Like Doreen. Oh, yes. I'm glad you stopped me. Thank you. <laughs> Take a part. Lovely part. Especially here. Is that a man like to be section? It is. The MLD section are here in force to the My goodness, that man has sold some merchandise before the show. Stick with my moniker, man like the old boy. I get all that merch. Love that merch. Oh, and the, I think the fans here might slightly be behind man like Doris Bobby. Yeah, well, this is going to be an interesting one. David Francisco, Doris's opponent here in this quarterfinal, he's a big fan favourite here. But how many people can uh, get an entire audience to wrap along with him on their entrance? It's true. Well, maybe this is what David is about to show us right now. Do you know if he's a lyrical dragon as well? I don't think so. But we'll see. Let's find out. Let's find out. Some sort of bars, but you know, we can we can give him some notes on that afterwards. Maybe we can help him work on some of those, some of those live up and drag him lines. I don't, I don't know how keen he'll be on there, but uh, it's going to be separate. We've got another one. What is your favourite ring jacket? Oh, I mean, you know, I've got to be honest. The, um, the David's one does hold a very close one in my heart. I like the colour scheme. I like the sort of sleeveless but long blowingness to it as well, so I think I'm probably going to have to go with that thing back in this time. I do love the Reese's, but there's something about the design of that one that I feel awesome. Now this is interesting. The entry requirements for this tournament was a single win in purpose. Mm. Now David has two under his belt. David has beaten Warren Banks, and he has beaten uh, your best friend of mine, Madka. Oh. Now, Doris only got his singles win on our last show against Billy Hayes. It was, it was a pretty convincing win. It was a, it was a good match, but uh, Doris didn't seem to lose control at any kind of point throughout. What do you think each man is going to have to bring to this? Well, I think, in a way, they're both going to have to focus on themselves rather than the fans for different, different ways. Maybe. I think David, who is a man who thrives off the support of the fans, at purpose is maybe going to find that fan support not quite behind him just because of how much everyone loves Man Like Doris but David has got to shut that part of himself off and dig deep and find it within himself when without the fans to still get a win and Man Like Doris has to potentially make sure the fans don't quite 
take his eye off the ball. The fans can distract him sometimes. He can, like he's doing now, <laughs> when he maybe should be eye on his opponent. So I think both people, it's who can maybe pay, be more present and not pay attention to the fans and focus on the task at hand. These are good points. Now, David looks a bit more focused in the ring at the moment. He isn't really taking his eyes off the ring too much. He's uh, always looking in that direction. The Reese, on the other hand, he's pointing out everyone wearing his T-shirt. Well, I mean, and, and he's just plugged his merch. So again, this is—I think this is what the what this contest might come down to. See, is <laughs> and the fans love man like Reese. I love man like Reese. But there is a championship title to be working towards here. And David even acknowledging that. He, he acknowledging that this is going to be a hard one for him because he relies on the fans. Well, for his young age, David is a veteran. He's been around a long time in the game. And I think him pointing it out is not just for everyone else, it's for himself. He knows that now. He knows the fans aren't going to be behind him like they usually are. Did you say young age, Bobby? Well, did you say young? <laughs> what is he paying you? Young age. The man's 47. Oh, wait, a tight, tight headlock for a 47 year old man there. Now, this is what I'm saying. He is a veteran. That is a, a, a tight, tight headlock. Doris is struggling to find his way out of it. And it's the little thing. Oh, no. Doris there out into a headlock of his own. Very nice. Doris got underneath the, uh, the kind of uh, center point of David there, got low and spun around and got him down. Oh, David into a full Nelson, spins around. That cravat. Nice cravat there. Now, this isn't how I expected this to start. Both of these men often like to kind of come out swinging, explosive, but they're kind of feeling each other out here now. Definitely seems like a feeling process. Oh, but David just <laughs> ran straight through. I don't think Doris can quite believe what happened there. Doris is a strong man, but David David has a bit of height on him. I mean, David is is, uh, is a big man himself. He hits the gym a lot, and uh, I but don't think a man like Doris is going to be able to outpower David. The thing that people speed. underestimate with David Francisco is that he's got an explosive first step so you can quickly find yourself caught out there and that's how Doris looked up and what was heading towards him just David with a firm shoulder tackle and oh he sleeps there he's learned his lesson quite oh, Bobby I think I spoke slightly too soon there David straight back in with the headlock this is good good I'm enjoying it I see what you mean about the step David almost took that last step a bit bigger a bit more of a wide stride so we could get the power behind there's the shoulder there's explosivity in that and that's how you can catch your opponent out if they're not expecting that slight gear change you can catch them off guard He's trying, oh, trying to fight out there. And he sends him again. Another sleep. Third time lucky. Oh, leap over. No, third time with that shoulder tackle. Now David looking, he looked a little frustrated just for a second, but he's uh, kind of regrouped. And Doris quite slow getting back up to his feet there. I think, yeah, I think he might be rocked slightly, or certainly not being comfortable being on the back foot here. There's that, that, that tight headlock again. He has he has Doris. Doris has really struggled to find his way out, but that'll do it. Slight oh, takeover. Into a pin. Oh, David back up, back on top. No! Both back up to a vertical base there. Did, uh, no, was that David dragging him back in or was Doris trying to push back in? I think that was the strength of Doris there, fighting his, his way back up to his feet. Now Doris back in with that headlock. David with a reversal straight away. This is the thing, Doris cannot get any leverage. He cannot get any uh, momentum behind him. Up and over again. That'll do it. The drop kick to the jaw of David Francisco. Man like this deep arm drag. Ducks the uh, attempt at the punch and a shoulder tackle of his own. And he's finally, finally managed to shoulder tackle David down to the uh, mat. But maybe he should have gone for a pin there, but I'm not saying that he would have won. I'm saying he would have worn his opponent down. Instead, what did he do? He focused on the fans. Now, this is, this is it. Can, can Doris keep that leverage? He's in the corner now. The ref's going to ask for a clean break there. Oh, Doris switches him in, though. We're going to get a clean break here. Both of these men would usually, usually give us a clean break. So we've got it. Well, that's good. That's what I like to see. Sportsmanship. Oh, oh. Oh, but David just jumps straight over. Goats him in there. Another up and over. Looking for that roll up, the sunset flip. Oh, a classic pin manoeuvre that David likes to use there. Got himself a two. Oh, a deep arm drag of his own. Holds on. Uh, putting some pressure onto that shoulder, rubbing the, uh, the palm, pushing the palm down into the shoulder. You see Doris there clasping his hands, trying to make sure his arm doesn't get hyperextended. That's a good move there, good technique. 
David wrenching on it though, gets it out. Now I think David is coming with a game plan here. I think he's he's he's, he's holding Derice to a more technical match. Well, I think as we've seen in a few of Derice's matches, Bobby, it's that he's he's agile. He's got speed. There's a lot that he can do when you give him. Room. David here is closing that gap. Oh, a nip up there. He went back to the world. David avoided it and a kip up. But David again using that power, that technique, forces Derice down to the mat with a shoulder tackle. Irish whip there. Oh, and a boot just straight to the jaw. That shotgun drop kick, and it was on the Close mark. the leg. Oh, two there. That was so accurate. Some people, like, anyone check the back of the room for a tooth, please? I think Therese is checking his own mouth for a tooth right now. I wasn't expecting that boot at all. Big sweep and a slam there from David. Off the ropes, and a lovely leg drop. Again, hooks the leg, cross lateral press. So this is what we've seen from Francisco in the past, especially in his singles encounters. When he gets the advantage, he will play a very technical game. He doesn't allow his opponent much time to breathe. And that's what that's what separates a lot of people, is that you don't want your opponent to, to get some composure, to get any air back in their lungs. You've got to stay on them, and you've got to try and force that pin on them. Reese up and over out of the corner. Hits the ropes. And he misses that right arm. Nice Hurricane Rider takedown. The leg lariat, that is a nice move to the jaw. That could have been it. That was a that was a clean strike. And David now comes up holding his face. I think Therese thought that might have been three there. Do you see? He looked at a quick glance at the ref, couldn't quite believe it wasn't. And now I think he's trying to formulate another plan, which is hard when you're on top and maybe your original plan isn't going as expected. You've got to sort of make it up as you go along, and it's hard to sort of keep your composure while doing so. And he's resorting to something that we don't often see from Therese. Therese is normally all about flair. Now he's just working the uh, midsex to Francisco with strikes. And I think that's a testament to how well David has worked his own game here at the start of this match. Is that Doris is now feeling a little bit like he's going to have to close that space down. He's got to stay on David because if you give David an opening, as we've seen before, he will take advantage of it. But I will admit, it looks like he's going to struggle to take advantage of it at the moment because uh, Doris has kicked him in his face. Now what's happened here now, Doris with his little bit of an advantage has seemed to have found his composure a little bit. He looks a bit cooler, a bit calmer, and this is his chance to regroup a bit. But I think he is also giving David a chance to regroup here, again, by acknowledging the fans and talking to the fans. And like I said, I think it's the person that can switch the fans out and focus on the game plan that's going to win here. And I think he's listening to you. He went straight for a cover there. No, no probably real chance of winning, forcing David to kick out. And, but is that wise then, Bobby? <laughs> Getting the crowd to join in with a chant and see, maybe he would have suplexed him first time. David gets the centre of gravity low there. His hips below Doris's hips. He is a taller man, so that's a, a good technique there. David hooking the leg as well, pulling, he pulls Doris in close and makes him lose his balance. It's hard to suplex someone. But then David straight up with a oh no, Doris back down, gave him a few strikes to his stomach. Oh, but David just powers through. Vertical suplex. And David has caused that separation. I think he needed them. If anything, I think those punches to the gut just made David more angry. And he just gave him a, a quick suplex straight over. Doris clutch in the back of his head now. If Doris doesn't want to lose his advantage, he needs to. No, he has lost it. David just flattens him into the corner. Oh, but a back elbow. Up to the top. The back on top, but lands on his feet. Goes for the drop kick. David catches him. Is he looking for that clover leaf? I think he recently. is. Going. Yeah, I think that. that's going to be. Oh, that is, and it's in deep there. And he sits back as well. Now, the angle of Doris's spine now. See, but the trouble is here, Bobby, is that Doris does have surprisingly large legs. Also, a big gym going himself. And you see how David can't quite get around his legs. He's not got his hands together, he's not got his fingers linked. So it's hard to yank back and do and get as much pressure on the spine as you want there. Pulls Doris back. From there you go. Good adjustment by David. That's smart. That's good. But still, it's hard to hold on to your opponent when your fingers are slipping like that. What well, you said about the size of Doris's legs, if you want to have those vertical legs, and he gets to the ropes. I thought David had him there. He was losing his grip a bit, but he was sat so deep. I think David also thought he had him there, and there you can see a little bit of frustration etching into David Francisco's face here. And I think he, whatever game plan he did have, he's maybe got to change slightly and come up with something new. Can you see, look at that look on his face now, and he's surprised. Reese gets his boot up, cuts David off at the pass. Up and over again. That handspring lands on his feet, and a super kick right on the money. My goodness. Reese about to get ahead of steam. David holds on to his, holds on to his trunks I there. think David's caught in there. 
up into looking at that back suplex. Springs Doris off the rope. Looks for a close line, but Doris runs straight through it and gives him one of his own. Doris is fired up here. David Francisco on jelly legs here. Doris with a pop up, sit out power bomb. It is over. Oh, I thought that was it, Bobby. David kicking out at the last possible second here. Now, what does Doris do here? Like his game plan was thrown out the window right in the beginning of this match. He seems to be going on instinct here. Well, we've seen Doris go go for this option before. He goes to the top. I think he's trying to hit him with that 450 that he likes to finish opponents with. It is a picture perfect 450. I think if he can hit it, this is over. Oh, but lands it to feet though. Again, the agility of Doris. Oh, another stiff back elbow. That moves again. Goes to the wall again and misses. But this time the drop kick lands. And DeVries now needs to close that gap. There's one side, and David. See, DeVries turned his back on his opponent there and ran away from him, and David capitalised, but doing the same. Oh, David dodges, though. David over, gets a kick to his face for the trouble. DeVries would normally handspring there, cuts it out just to look straight for that super kick. Oh, I think we've seen this before, Bobby. Oh, he's going to hoik it up. Looking for that power bomb. He to Reese across the shoulders on his back, straight down like a sack of rubbish. My goodness, Therese is in a world of pain. Both men really feeling the fatigue in this match here. You can really feel the importance of the, the uh, being crowned the first ever purpose champion here. And David with a hurricane runner. And so this is what it means to people to be in this tournament. They're going to break out moves that you've not seen before. Hurricane runner from David Francisco followed up with an enziguri. And what's he going to go for now? He gets him up. You know that stalling you and Oh, that's got to be it. battle between both men there Bobby but David Francisco in the dying moments of that match just managing to put together some offense that gave him the win what an effort by a man like Doris he has come up short but he has nothing to be ashamed of Rex I mean you want to talk about a man that has it all and that man would be a man like Therese. Now, like you said, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. David Francisco just put together three or four moves in the dying moments of that match that just completely caught man like Therese off guard. But I don't think David would even mind me saying for large portions of that match, man like Therese looked like he was on top. Looked like he could have stolen it. Now, this is an interesting point. David showing uh, man like Therese some respect here. And I think the crowd certainly want to see a handshake here. And the crowd giving love to Doris, the love that he deserves, I think, here. Shake David's hand. I think he will. Oh, that's what you've you got to give the people what they want, Bobby. And they will show respect I'm back to the And David Francisco! What a quarterfinal match we had here. God. Oh. <laughs> the crowd was 50 50. The match was 50 50. Uh, ah, that's. Let me tell you something. That makes me feel alive. Sure, that was the hardest, the hardest test that I've been through here at Purpose. Very likely, the hardest test that I've been through in my entire career. <laughs> if it's not for the opponent, Therese, Therese, you're great. And you show me that, you show me and everyone there. I'm not saying that I can beat Therese 10 times out of 10. Now, he showed today that he had me like that. He made me fight for it. He made me crawl for it. And I did it at the end. At the end, I got to win. 
And I honestly believe the reason why I got to win is because this time, this time I wanted it just a little bit more. And that's the key there. There's eight people in this tournament. If you are out of the picture already, but I'll still count with them. The thing that makes me stand out from all of those people is that I wanted just a little bit more than anyone else here. I, I love purpose more than anyone backstage, more than anyone in this tournament, because of course I do. So of course I want to be the purpose champion. So I'm looking forward to facing Jordan Brakes in the finals. I'm looking forward to wrestling him again. I'm looking forward to move on to the finals. And who knows who I'm gonna find in the finals. Maybe I'll wrestle Nino Bryan. Nino, Nino, you're the man. But when that bell rings, you're a competitor in my way. And trust me, Nino, I will go through you the same way that I went through the Reese right now and that everybody, because I wanted just a little bit more. Is it the OGMO? Well, I can't wait to have the OGMO in the finals. I can wait to see him there, one on one, in the ring, finally. Because I'll beat him up like I always do. I mean, we know what happens when David Francisco and the OGM are in the ring fighting for a championship, don't we? I want it just a little bit more. Maybe, maybe it's Connor Mills. Maybe it's the person whose path I've been crossing ever since I came to this country for professional wrestling. Ever since he started wrestling. David Francisco and Conor Mills had more matches against each other than anyone else. And wouldn't it be fitting that in the house that David Francisco built, I get to fight Conor Mills for the championship that I want more than anything else? That would be a great career chapter, wouldn't it? And I want it just a little bit more. That's the key. We are fighting for the Purpose Wrestling Championship. I am going to the finals and I am getting the Purpose Wrestling Championship because I want it just a little bit more than anyone else. There's nothing more that I hate in this business than losing. I can't stand it. I'm not here to lose. I don't put in the work every week, every month doing gym all that stuff to lose. I work too hard for it. But all that means is I've got room for improvement and I know that I'm in the best shape of my life, the best career progress of my life, and I'm keeping going, I'm learning every match. I'm speaking to the best there is. So today, I came up short, but you know what? That doesn't mean that there isn't nothing left for me in progress because I've got my boy, Dan Maloney, we've got some unfin unfinished business in purpose wrestling. And you know what? That's what I'm motivated for anyway. So today, it's an hour, and it's not a loss, it's a lesson. I'm coming back from my boy, 0121. We've got business to handle, and we're gonna slap people up, man. Safe. At our next show, Lightspeed, 10th of June, Merton Art Space, Jordan Breaks. The first person through to a semi-final will take on David Francisco. I am undefeated in Purpose Wrestling. Jordan Briggs is undefeated in Purpose Wrestling. And when it comes to matches between David Francisco and Jordan Briggs, David Francisco is undefeated against Jordan Briggs. So, just saying. On the other half of the bracket, Nino Bryan will be facing Connor Mills. The story with Nino Bryan and Destination Everywhere just started. He did pass the biggest test ever in his life, but now he's facing Connor Mills, and you just have to know that Destination Everywhere are coming for his neck. Jordan Saeed, on behalf of himself and RJ Singh, the EC Sovereigns, challenged JJ Lynch and Rex Armstrong to one final match. This match will have the losers disband. How insane and personal how things come between these two teams that this is where it's gotten to. It's been six months in the making and it's gonna culminate at light speed. The OGMO versus Solomon Lamb in a last man standing match. These two men hate each other. These two men have been stalking each other. These two men have been vile to each other. And it can only end one way, when one man cannot get up. This is coming June 10th, Purpose Wrestling Lightspeed at the Merton Art Space in Wimbledon. Thank you for watching Purpose Wrestling on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe.